Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this What Is Wednesday, I'm going to cover something that is, well, very, very hot of a topic right now, uh, which is, well, GitLab. We're going to be doing this video as What Is GitLab, and I'm going to be covering this uh, because of the whole Microsoft acquisition of GitHub. Now, before I get into it, I do want to mention that I'm really not that much of a sky is falling kind of person on this GitHub uh, being acquired by Microsoft thing. I, Microsoft's been doing great things lately, and I, I can't necessarily imagine that they're going to run GitHub into the ground or something. So I, I'm, I'm not exactly fleeing GitHub or something myself. But that said, I have been using GitLab for quite a long time. In fact, you can find uh, GitLab tutorials on this series or on this YouTube channel from a while ago. In fact, so long ago at this point, they may be a bit out of date. So I've been following GitLab for a long time. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what GitLab is. What is GitLab? Well, at its core, GitLab is a basic, it's basically a place where you can store your repositories. You can store your code and you can work on it with your team. It's a remote host for your Git repositories. And just like Bitbucket is or GitHub is, it's basically, yeah, it's a place you store your code. That is very most basic, right? It's using Git version control and it's storing your code there. But just like GitHub is, it's not just a store. It holds your code and does quite a bit more. And you might be wondering, well, what kind of features carry over from GitHub and things like that? Well, I'm going to be approaching this as someone who hasn't used any of these platforms before. So while GitHub was sort of initially, you know, popular for its social coding where you can follow people and stuff like that, I think GitLab has always been very focused on the amount of features it can give you. In fact, they rapidly add features and work on GitHub. I, I remember when I had my own self-hosted version of GitHub or GitLab itself, uh, there were there were updates to it constantly. So some of the things you can do with just like GitHub, uh, you can have boards where you can have features and and move and organize features and whether they're in progress or whether or not they're this, you could label them, you can tag them, you can uh, have people on them, but it basically gives you features uh, to organize your code. So we have all sorts of planning and issue and milestones and labels and all that good stuff that you're used to for project management that can really allow you to manage your project very well and work within larger teams or even smaller teams or individuals. Uh, it also has the same sort of file browsers and stuff that you're used to within things like GitHub. You have things like files, commits, um, uh, all of your files, you can look at graphs and charts and you can check out your different branches do pull requests and anything you've come to uh use you come to be used to from something like github in addition i mentioned pull requests you have the same sort of interface a lot of the stuff is going to feel very familiar just a little bit different right from other platforms you can also manage containers things like docker images if you're using a docker there's this whole sort of third-party add-on system to GitLab. They make it really easy to extend GitLab, so you'll see all sorts of uh, really neat integrations in this thing. In addition, you can also do some continuous deployment, uh, continuous delivery, continuous integration, that kind of stuff, where your build process is being run directly from your Git. So maybe you push to a branch, it compiles your code, and then deploys it automatically for you. So again, we mentioned continuous deployment, continuous integration, continuous delivery, that sort of stuff. In addition, you can also monitor your code. You can see that it even collects performance metrics uh, using Prometheus uh, to see how code changes impact your production environment. So I pretty much just rattled through some of these GitLab features in here. I highly recommend just creating an account here just to check it out, see if that's something you're interested in. And just like GitHub, there is a pricing model. Um, just for the most basic, it's free, so it doesn't really hurt to try it out. But if you do want to have sort of a account with additional people on it, then you are going to be adding like $4 a month per person or premium features where you get some things like disaster recovery for 19 bucks a month. Again, it's very, very similar to sort of GitHub's pricing model. Now, what are some things that people, uh, like what are some of the reasons besides not being owned by Microsoft or something? Like why would people be wanting to jump to GitLab specifically over something like Bitbucket? 
And in my opinion, GitLab has way more features. Now, Bitbucket is great. I mean, it's free, unlimited repos, that unlimited private repos that even gives you things like boards and all sorts of stuff like that. The The new design for, uh, for Bitbucket is excellent, too. I really like Bitbucket's new design. However, GitLab and GitHub are quite a bit more feature heavy than Bitbucket. However, the big thing I believe is, well, check this out, GitLab dot com forward slash groups forward slash gitlab dot or hyphen org you can see that whoa hey gitlab is hosted on gitlab meaning gitlab is open source meaning that you can host your own version of gitlab if you wanted to in fact uh platforms like digital ocean make this super easy to get fired up with a new gitlab repo so if you really wanted to you could host your own version but then again you'd have to keep up with updates and security updates and stuff like that and you'd have to pay for hosting costs so it's not exactly free Although you can uh, host your own and modify and do all that good stuff. You can even see about how they're actually building GitLab or you can commit to it and that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, there's this project is really, really interesting. And at this point, it's fairly mature because it's been around for so long, uh, a few years at this point. And so I really love this. I, I love a lot of things about GitLab. Uh, the thing I like most about it is just the amount of features and how they are adding features constantly. Again, I was getting updates to this thing all the time, and each update brought new features and new developments. It has a lot of momentum. It has a lot of people behind it, and they have a pretty cute logo too. So if that uh, stands for anything, I know GitHub had a pretty cute logo as well. Um, so if you're in it just for the cute logos, I think GitLab is definitely up there with this little fox logo. At least I'm pretty sure it's a fox. It looks like a fox to me. Cool. So that's it, really. I mean, GitLab is a total project management place where your code can live and your team can organize things and work on ideas and file issues. Again, if you've used GitHub, it's going to feel very similar, but very different. Uh, it's really, really nice. Love, love, love GitLab. And I'm not just saying this. I'm not necessarily part of this moving to GitLab. Uh, I have repos on all three major platforms. It's in my best interest to sort of keep an eye on all of them. But again, if you like uh, uh, are looking for something new in this space, or maybe you're not in this space at all, you don't have your code hosted anywhere, I, you know what? Get, definitely check out GitLab. It's a, a really cool company. Again, this video is non-sponsored. I'm not collecting any money from uh, GitLab. I'm not anti-GitHub. I'm not anti-Microsoft purchasing GitHub or anything like that. Um, just wanted to take this opportunity now that a lot of people are talking about GitLab to explain exactly what it is. So, uh, that said, this is What is Wednesday. If you are interested in helping support this channel, head on to leveluptutorials.com. I have a new video series out for purchase called Level 2 React. It's on sale for the rest of this month for 29 bucks. It teaches you all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, we go over understanding render props, like why you would want to use a render prop, what it even is, how it can help your code. We talk about portals, fragments, context API, a whole bunch of jargony stuff, and maybe demystifying some of that stuff. We also get into some really slick animations, including animations with user inter interaction where you're dragging around and that sort of thing. Uh, so it's really, really cool. If you're interested in checking out and learning or gaining some intermediate React school skills, check out Level 2 React on Level Up Tutorials, or you can become a pro and get access to that, as well as a whole bunch of other tutorial series like Headless WordPress, Vue.js for Everyone, Pro Gatsby, Level 2 React Native, Redux and React for Everyone, Modern CSS Layouts, um, React Native for Everyone, React 16 for everyone mastering figma all this stuff uh you'll get access to all of it with the subscription and if you sign up for a year you will save yourself a bunch of bucks and get access to each new series that's available every single month so that's it as always this is scott thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one